the Lord, saints, and welcome to today's broadcast from the Solid Rock, featuring Dr. Herbert B. Robinson, Jr. We are glad you joined us, and we pray that today's message will be an added value to your life. Welcome, my beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this segment of From the Solid Rock. Please join me in saying, my hope is in God, my trust is in God, my faith is in God. Please affirm that by saying this, I anchor my belief in God. God bless you. Please enjoy the message. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and welcome once again to these few moments that we will share with you today. We thank God for you listening in and watching, and we hope and pray that something will be said that can help you in your daily living. It's my pleasure to invite you to the book of Psalms, the Old Testament hymnal, in Psalm 1829. There's a passage that's been recorded that I'd like to share with you. And as it says in Matthew 18, 29, For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Again, that is Psalms 18th number and the 29th verse. The book of Psalm is not written in chapters. It's written in numbers. So when we make reference to it, we say Psalm 18. Psalm number 18. Or Psalm the number 18. Not chapters. Because Psalms is not a book of chapters. I said that simply because this book of Psalms is a book that deals with emotions and reflections of human experience. All of us have been touched in some way or another that we can reference in the book of Psalms. We find within this book of Psalms how to deal with faith and comfort, how to deal with agony, the agony of doubt, and the agony of despair. This book teaches us that no matter how you may feel, no matter what you may go through, whatever your mood or your attitude, something can be found in the book of Psalm to reflect how you feel, to address your situation never fails. In our church, we read through the book of Psalms the entire year. All year long, we focus on the Psalms. The Psalm writer has something in there for every human need. All of these experiences that we go through that can help us can be found right here in this book. In the very first number of Psalm, David, that King David, he says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, I just made reference to that simply because you're blessed when you don't hang out in the channels of the ungodly, nor go down the avenues of the sinners, or sit in the seat of the scornful. The Bible says your delight ought to be in the Lord. That's the first thing that we find when we read the book of Psalms. When we open it up, we're told where we ought to be. If you're lacking in happiness, engage in reading the book of Psalms. Here in chapter 18, it gives us a burst of energy. 
And we could use some energy. All of us can. This particular book in 18, it, it, it renews our spirits in this 18th number, I should say. It renews our spirits and rekindles the thrill of our youth. I've heard stories all my life about people looking for the fountain of youth, trying to, or, or trying to turn back the hands of time, or wondering where all the years went, where they went by so fast. I've heard all those things. But here, in Psalm number 18, and in verse 29 in particular, the writer says, By my God, by my God, I can leap over a wall. By my God, I can do all things. By my God, I can climb mountains. I can move mountains. By my God, I can be healed. By my God, I've been delivered. It is by my God. That all things fall into place. There is nothing that can tie you down or hold you back when you know that you are in the presence of God. Being in the presence of God, that alone should give you renewed strength. I believe it was the same writer in the book of Psalms that said to the Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. Create in me a clean heart and renew. God has the possibility and the power to renew that which has gotten old and stale. He can add value to your life. How do you think, my beloved, people who have been imprisoned who have been unjustly imprisoned, I should say, and had fellowship with God and were able to make it. When you've got the presence of God in you, it makes a great difference. And so you see, life is unlimited when you have fellowship with God. There are no parameters around what can stop you. If it falls within the will of God, God will make it happen. We're not relying on anybody to give us anything. No. As long as you are a child of God, you can take the limits off. You can take off those things that have you blocked in. Why? Because all things are possible when you know God. God himself has said, with man, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I like to think this, that when you put your trust in man, things are impossible. Because man will trick you. Man will deceive you. Your very own kin will steal from you and hurt you and think nothing of it. And if they thought about it at all after they did it to you, they'll think about how they can get you again. But with God, all things are possible. I've got witnesses to that. All in the history of my family, in the history of the church in which I serve, there have been times when we were counted out, when we weren't expected to make it happen. But look at what God has done. I am a living testimony of what God can do. I thank him for that, and I wish I had time to testify. But I can tell you this. When I was a child, at the tender age of nine years old, I was run over by a tractor trailer. Yeah, and on that trailer, there were about 12 to 15 other boys. 
with garbage cans. And we were at a camp sponsored by the police department just for little young fellas to have something to do during the summer. We were on trash detail where we had to empty all of the trash cans in the compound. And on our way back, we got stuck in the sand. And so the driver of the tractor made everybody get off. So we got off while he rocked it and rocked it. And then he finally got it out. And he said, okay, everybody back on, everybody back on. And so everybody got back on except me because I had to tie up my shoe. I tied up my shoe and the tractor trailer was going back to the camp going back to the campground. And I had to run as fast as I could to try to catch up to it. And I ran and ran and ran. And every time I tried to jump on the back of the trailer, those boys would push me off. They laughed. They would push me off. I would run, they would push me off. I'd run and jump, they pushed me off. So I decided I was gonna outsmart them. I decided I was gonna run to the front of the trailer and jump on from the front because there was a gate or barrier at the front and I would jump and grab it. Well, that didn't work out too well. I fell, I jumped, made the jump, hit my knee, my right knee, and my foot got caught under the wheel and the wheels came up to roll over me. And it was the grace of God that he turned my body away from the wheel that was coming. And that wheel ran over me and broke my hip and busted my knee on my right leg. The doctor said I would never walk the same if I ever walked at all. I would never be able to run again. But honey, you should see me dancing in church. You should see me running because I had praying parents, I had praying grandparents, I had people who were praying for me at the church. Within two years, I was running normal again. I was in a cast from my chest down to my feet. I'm a living testimony that with God, all things are possible. I thought I'd just share that with you because there's some people who don't believe that God is a miracle worker. Well, now that I've told you that story, you need to know God beyond your grace that you say over your food. I know what God can do when you are in his presence and he in yours. When God has his hand on you, there ought to be a constant fellowship. You don't need any special reason to pray. Just talk to him. Father, here I am. I just want to thank you for being my God. That wasn't so hard, was it? It will help you to leap over the walls of life. That injury to me was intended to block me. No more football playing, no more basketball playing, no more activities of that nature. But to be on crutches or a wheelchair for the rest of my life from the age of nine years old for all of my days. No, God didn't have it that way. God spared my life and my ability to walk why I have no problem testifying about him and talking to others about him. It's why I have no problem coming to you from the solid rock because I know that the word of God is solid. He'll change your life. He'll fix it for you. You have to develop a closer fellowship with him and stop using his name in vain when your flesh is challenged. Oh, you'll figure that out. So many of us have used God's name in vain. 
But God wants you to use his name for the purpose of glorifying him so that he might lift you up. And all of us could stand to be lifted a little bit higher. I don't care where you are in life. You may have retired and you've got your pension and your social security. All your children are doing well. You're doing fine. You have a beautiful home, a beautiful spouse, a fine car. Your money seems like it's never going to run out. Well, let me tell you, there's going to come a time when you're going to have to answer to God for who you are and what you have done in this life. The world will try to box you in. This world that we're in is governed by Satan. The Bible says he roams up and down in the earth seeking whom he may devour. And he gets into the spirits of some individuals who don't want to be a part of God. That's why it says in Psalm 51 that we're born into sin and shaped into iniquity. And I did paraphrase that. That is to say this, that we have no choice but to be born in sin because we're children of Adam. But this world shapes us into the iniquity that we are. Our society shapes us and makes us who we are. And that's why I found being in the word of God my best way to deal with this life. The best way to deal with what goes on in this world. He gives me peace when others expect me to be chaotic. He gives me joy when others expect me to be sullen and sad. He fights my battles when I don't have sense enough to be still. He takes good care of me. And I know he does because he's brought me from being under a tractor, about to be crushed, to where I am now. Oh, I'd praise him if I were you, because the world will try to box you in and make you see nothing but what's in the world. My parents didn't see it the world's way, that I would be a cripple. Forgive me for saying that if I'm politically wrong for using that statement. My grandparents were not caught up in the world. Where well, I would be at a disadvantage for the rest of my days. No. They had a fellowship with God and instilled it in my parents who instilled it in me. And I'm coming to you today to tell you about the God that I serve can do anything. He can make all things possible. Right now, right now, right this minute, whatever's going on in your life that you think is impossible to get over, impossible to deal with, you take it to God right now and say it's possible with God. God will help you to leap over that wall. When I can leap, honey. Oh, yeah, I can. This world is not intended for you to stay in it, but you can enjoy what it offers if you do it God's way. Jesus said to be in the world, but not of the world. You can have what's here. You don't have to make a vow to poverty. You don't have to think that just because you're a Christian or that you're saved, that you're not supposed to have some of the finer things in life. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And as I tell the people in our church, the cattle on a thousand hills all belong to him. And because I am his child, I am of his royal priesthood. I'm a child of a king, the king. As a matter of fact, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And whatever he wants me to have, he gives it to me. And so I say to you today, come on out of the world and have more of a out of the out of this world experience with Jesus Christ. Get to know him better. Get to have that out of this world experience like John did on the Isle of Patmos or like David did, I'm sorry, Daniel did in the lion's den or the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. 
People of the world will try to tell you that those are myths, that those are fairy tales. But I'm here to tell you right now that I believe in my heart as I sit here as John was on that Isle of Patmos. It was on the Lord's day and he was in the Holy Ghost when God opened up heaven for him to see into it. And there came this book of Revelation to give us an ideal picture of what is to come. And not only that, but when it came to Daniel being in the lion's den, History will show you that Daniel did exist and that Daniel was thrown into a lion's den. I want you to know right now that just as much as John was on that Isle of Patmos and Daniel was in that lion's den, those three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have been thrown in there because they would not bow down to another king. The Bible says that the Son of God went into that fiery furnace. The Bible says that God shut the mouths of those lions. The Bible says that God opened up heaven for John to look into it. And God wants you to have that fellowship with him. He's inviting you to be a part of his kingdom. So I suggest to you today, that you invite God into your prison. Invite God into your lion's den. Ask God to come and see about you in your fiery furnace. And he will do it. I know he will. I told you. I'm a living witness. And so you see, life is closing in on us daily. God has brought me through all of these years for a reason. And I believe that God brought me through all of these years just to reach you. Yes, you. He preserved me and kept me just so that you would be told that there's not much time. Life is closing in on you. There's not much time. Physically. You're not getting any younger. Day by day, time is catching up with you. But you know, my grandmother used to tell me the way that David said it. I was once young, but now I am old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. My beloved, I don't have to beg. God is going to bless me right where I am, and take me to where he wants me to be. He did it for me as a child. He did it for me as a teenager. He's doing it for me as an adult. God has not forgotten about me. He has not forsaken me. He has kept his word. He said, I will not leave you or forsake you. The interesting thing about my testimony my accident that I had, it happened after I had gotten baptized. How about that? Gave Christ my life at nine years old and got baptized on Easter Sunday. And the following summer, got run over by a tractor trailer. That is to say this. The devil will come after you when you give your life to Christ. Don't think that once you give it to him that life is going to be a bowl full of cherries. It's not. Don't think that you'll look through a colored glass once you accept Christ. That colored glass is going to get real dim. A bowl full of cherries will rot. But the Lord said, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. So, where we are right now is right here, my beloved. We put ourselves in the position that we are because we purposely do it. Life is closing in on us and we don't do the things that are important. When was the last time you read a book? Or have you ever read a book? 
When was the last time that you read the Bible consistently? God has given you strength. When was the last time you took a nature walk? Or just walk through the mall? I'd like to tell you today, stop being lazy. Stop letting life block you in. Stop blaming age or not being able to do things. Get into the presence of God and leap over the wall of life. Get you a running start. You've got it right here from the solid rock to get you a running start. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Because you'll find your strength in God. Walls can be jumped over as well as knocked down when you're in the presence of God. Either or, it's your choice. God gives you choices. Don't feel defeated because of life's demands. Don't feel as if God has counted you out. Demand that life give you something back. That's what the writer is talking about. He says here, for thou, for by thee I have run through a troop. Think of all the things that you have to run through. <clears throat> Excuse me. To get where you are today. Think of all the things you had to circumvent and run around and evade and avoid. And look at where you are now. That's why David says, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. You may have missed an opportunity in life that you're looking back on, but you're still God's child. You may think that you have missed your calling, but you're alive and you're still a child of God. You may even say you don't have all that you want out of life. You've done everything by the book, and yet you still come up short. No, as long as you are a child of God, you don't come up short. You come out on the good end. As his child, stay in his presence. And if you have fallen by the wayside and you're not in the presence of God, the hymn writer says, come home, come home, come home tonight. God is waiting on you. God bless you. We hope that you were blessed by the message for the day, and we look forward to you joining us again at the same time next week. Have a great life and be empowered by saying, I anchor my belief in God. Grace and peace, family. This is Bishop Marvin Sapp, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Everybody, this is your girl Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicki Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network.